Hello everybody and welcome! Today we're in the custom corner and we are looking at the City of Secrets Investigator Pack designed by Aug, who you might know is the designer of the Bloodboard campaign, and also the Knight of Vespers? I hope I'm not wrong on that. That would make me feel pretty embarrassed if I was. So, don't mind me, just quickly opening up YouTube to check. <laughs> Going to my YouTube channel and searching Knight of the Vespers. Let's see if it comes up. I just gotta make sure now. We just gotta... I'm like, pretty sure? Alright, don't don't mind my other voice coming in and talking for a few seconds here. Yes! I was right! Let's go. Night of Vespers was a very cool um, custom expansion that I did a video on. Uh, there will be a link to the workshop, and uh, let's see if I remember to put the Night of Vespers down in the description. But this City of Secrets is... An investigator based on each of the guilds from Ravnica. If you don't know what Ravnica is, Ravnica is a Magic the Gathering plane that has had a bunch of expansions or a bunch of um, sets released in it. And there are 10 guilds in Ravnica and they're each a two color pairing. So like in, um, in Arkham, there are five classes. Guardian, Seeker, Rogue, Mystic, Survivor. There are five colors in Magic the Gathering. White, blue, black, red, and green. So basically there's a color pairing of each of them. And there's ten guilds. And they each flavorfully have their own like thematic feeling to them. And they also are each... Uh, they have their own like unique mechanics. So as far as I'm aware, Aug took each guild, all the mechanics in those guilds, and made an investigator for them. So I'm very excited. I'm a big fan of Magic the Gathering. I, I like Magic the Gathering a lot. And I'm going to see if I can pick up who each investigator's guild is as we explore them as we go here. I actually purposely stayed away from anything Alec posted about this in the past because I was personally very excited to check these out. So we got 10 investigators to read through today. And we also are then going to um, play with the investigators as well in an upcoming video on the channel and also later today on the stream. If you're watching on YouTube, I stream every Tuesday and Friday. And they're great. You should come watch. All right. We're going to start with Carrie Lennox, the bartender. Criminal and entrepreneur. Two, three, four, three. Um, for his stats, soaks for eight and six. As a reaction... After you take a successful fight action that deals that uh, damage... There's a crow screaming right by my window. Zoomed in a bit much for stream? It, oh, it is! It is! Look at that. Okay, I can fix that. Boom. Alright. After you take a successful fight action that deals damage to an enemy, take one damage. Until the end of the round, you deal plus one damage. Interesting. Limit once per round. Elder Sign effect is plus zero. You may take one damage to automatically succeed. Interesting. So, going to the, the magic ones, this kind of makes me feel like this is Rakdos or Gruul on my initial read for it. I don't think it's Orzov. It definitely is black aligned. So this is one of the black guilds. Um, Black has this whole thing about taking, like, hurting yourself to gain benefits. And both Gruul and Rakdos are, like, the combat guilds. So, we're gonna find out. Alright. Um, deck building 30. Rogue 0 to 5. Neutral 0 to 5. Ally cards level 0. Alright, so the... These damn birds. Um... The idea is that you use allies as some of your potential soak because you actually don't have soak outside of that. So you could do um, Lonnie Ritter. But you could also look at other allies as well. But only ally cards level zero. Let's look at the signatures. You get one copy of each of them. The usual faces. The gang's all here. Uh, you have one additional ally slot. When you play an ally card from your hand, exhaust the usual faces, heal one damage, that ally costs one less resources. Whew! Wow, okay. That's pretty sick. It is permanent as well, so you just get it in play. So you have initial ally slot, and you can use it to heal damage and gain, uh, and then also it costs one less resource. That's really cool. That seems pretty sick. All right, I like it. I like it. And then we got last call. Oh, that guy got absolutely destroyed. For each card under your under control that takes up an ally slot, you must decide discard that card or take one direct horror. 
How's it going, Time Roller? If you do not control any cards to take up ally slots, take one direct damage and shuffle last call back into your deck. Okay. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. It's, I think it's a pretty fair, and I think it works really well for it. The horror is certainly scary. Uh, I think this is a nice, cool guy. I'm going to say, in my initial thought, that this guy is Gruel. That's going to be my initial my initial call here. I think this guy's red green. He feels kind of gruel. He also feels kind of Rakdosy to me. I don't know. A little bit like Unleash. If you don't know Magic the Gathering, you're just going to bear with me. There's going to be a lot of that here. But I think we're going to start there. Um, but we're going to see if someone else comes for it. But gruel or Rakdos is definitely kind of my vibe here. All right. All right. Madeline Galtier, the curator. Two five two three. When you would play an event card from your hand, exhaust X number of cards with the occult or relic trait under your control. Reduce the cost of that event by X. Interesting. Elder sign plus zero. Ready an occult or relic card under your control. Interesting. So this is convoke, isn't it? This is Selesnia. This is kind of Selesnia. It, it makes me think of Convoke. All right, okay. So Convoke is you actually, um, you can tap your creatures to pay for your cards. And that's kind of like what they, like, reduces the cost of them, like, so to speak. I think this is an interesting one because it does kind of feel... It seems really good. <laughs> It seems really interesting. Um, but it feels like there's a little bit of like a... I'm, I'm curious to like look through the occult and relics to see like what shows up. But it, it seems like a really cool card pool for this. Stat line's really good. 2523. Two, I just see 5 book and I say yes today, Satan. Alright. Um, Seeker 05, Rogue 02. Hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> I was just making a video about you. I was just writing a script for a video about that. Um, good card pool. Good ability. Good stat line for that card pool, too. Holy hell. Okay. So one copy of Uralt Shrekken and one copy of the Antiquarian for this. Let's see these. Uralt Shrekken, the Von Konenberg Manuscript. Um, the Uralt Shrekken. Okay. Madeline Gultier deck only. Item Occult Relic Tome. Exhausted, you get plus two to a non-investigate um, test you're taking. And then when you exhaust another occult or relic acid in your control, ready the Oralta Shrekken. Okay. That's pretty uh, pretty good. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Bonnie Walsh. It seems like a very powerful card. Um, thank God it gives you to a non-investigate test, so you need to do that. But it also just gives you something that you can like play to like reduce cost of stuff, which is really neat. And then we got the Antiquarian, Humanoid, Sorcerer, Avatar, 333. Um, so always scary as the Seeker to have an enemy as your signature weakness. Hunter and Alert. Okay. When the Antiquarian attacks you, remove an Occult or Relic card under your control from the game. Cancel that attack. Interesting. Huh. Scary stat line. So you're probably going to play like, um, I've got a plan, and your plan is to have the Antiquarian touch a doorknob and get electrocuted and die. That's probably what it is. You do have rogue cards, but you only have three foot, and this thing has alert. That's a spooky signature weakness. Interesting. I'm curious to see how it actually plays. But you also can just get your goon to kill it, right? You can also just get your goon to kill it. I dig it, though. I dig it. All right. I'm thinking that this is Selesnia. That's my guess. Okay. Uh, Lada Schaefer. Hey, Lada Schaefer, you know. 4322. Two. Soaks for 5 and 9. When you would draw one or more cards from your deck, return a card from your discard pile to your hand instead. Then discard X cards on top of your deck where X is one more than the number of cards you were instructed to draw. Limit once per round. So that's Dredge. This is Golgari. So Dredge is a very powerful Magic the Gathering mechanic where um, and you would instead of drawing cards, you can dredge. 
So, for example, it was like, I could be wrong, I haven't actually read a dredge card in a while, but it's like dredge three, and you discard the top three cards of your deck, and then you draw that card instead. I'm pretty sure that's what dredge is. But this looks like pretty much just like the exact same thing. So, yeah. Dredge, if you draw a card, you may mill three cards instead. If you do, do return this card. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, pretty much the same. When you would draw one or more cards from your deck, return a card from Discard Pull to your hand instead, then discard the top X cards of your deck, where X is one more than the number of cards you were instructed to draw. I mean, like, that is a very, very powerful ability. Like, Dredge is very strong. Um, yeah, and it's also really strong here. Like, being able to just grab the cards you want back seems a little bit spooky, scary skeleton. However, Forced! If Lotta Schaefer discards a weakness while performing the above ability, she must immediately draw that card and resolve its effects. Okay, just some weakness protection, which is good. And the novel's find effect is plus one. You may choose to card in your discard pile to return to your hand. So Dredge is very powerful, and I would not be surprised if we have the same thing here. Deck building size, 35. Survivor, 0, 5. Neutral, 0, 2. Non-permanent talent cards, 0 to 4. Service cards, level 0. That's a crazy deck building. Um... But, you know, I, I've seen a lot of custom investigators explore the talent card pool because there's no official investigator that does it. And it's only by the very nature of custom design to explore the spaces that have not been explored in the game. Um, uh, interesting. I mean, I, I kind of like this one. I would love to try it just because, like, the dredge mechanic seems very fun to explore in Magic. We also get three, I'm sorry, Explore in Arkham, because it's it's very good in Magic, and I'm curious how good it would be here, because um, it seems very good. Uh, especially also, like, you just have, like, a, you, you uh, short supply at the start, you just go nuts. It seems very good. Uh, notably, we have three copies of our Dream Remembered, and one copy of the Vice of Frau, which uh, is the White Woman. A Dream Remembered, zero cost event. Uh, fast, play only during your turn. Choose an investigator location. That investigator may choose any one card in their discard pile to return to their hand or shuffle back into their deck. Remove a dream member from the game. Seems good. Seems good. Great art, too. Alright, Device of Frau. Revelation, discard this card. At the end of the round, if Device of Frau is in your discard pile, remove the first non weakness card above and below this card from the game. Madame LeBranche, is that you? Interesting. A lot of memory issues with this card. And it seems like it would be kind of be a nightmare to play. However. Huh. What a... What, isn't this, this is really interesting, isn't it? This is really neat. Huh. Huh. So eventually, before the shuffle happens, um, eventually there will be, it'll hit like a weakness sandwich or it'll be like the bottom and then the weakness will be on top and it'll eventually stop. It's just a question of like how soon can it stop and how much does it eat? And then when you reshuffle, this is really interesting. I do think that this is a good card. This is a good weakness that kind of balances out the potential uh, power that the ability on the investigator can provide. So I think that's really cool. I think that's really neat. There should be one more of these. Or maybe it just wasn't changed and it was three at one point. Or it was two and then changed to three. Really neat. Ah, and then you can use this to shuffle the her into your deck. Okay. Okay, I, I dig it. I think this is really interesting. I think this is a really cool design and a really exploration of the space of Dredge. I think that's really neat. I, I love the hell out of that. Okay. Anton Moncrief, the medium. 
What are you? You're the housemaid. 4422. Criminal clairvoyance. Soaks for 7 and 7. Um, at the beginning of the investigation phase, reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If you reveal an Elder Sign symbol, you may immediately take an action as it was your turn. This action does not count towards the number of actions you could take each turn. If you reveal a plus one, zero, or bless, gain two resources. If you reveal a negative number, a skull, or a curse, draw a card. If you reveal a Simba, a cultist, tablet, or squid, or any other simple token, nothing happens. If you reveal an auto fail, you lose one action. What? What guild is this? What guild is this? I always forget them. Okay, so I'm going to make my predictions. So we have Gruul. Gruul. Or Rakdos. Let me just write them all down. Gruul. Or I always miss one. Selesnia. We have Golgari. We have Azorius. We have Boros. We have Orzov. Uh, we have Demir. Oh god. Simic? I always forget Simic. And I'm missing one. There's always one. I always just end up missing one. There's ten. Blue is Azorius. White green is Selesnia. Blue. <laughs> Uh, we can do this. Don't don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. I got this. Red green I have. Is it? There we go. The blue. Blue red. Okay, we got them. Who are you? Is this maybe, like, forecast in a way? I don't know. I actually don't know who this one is. Anyways, it seems interesting. Uh, it does feel like you kind of just, like, don't have an ability in a way. It is seemed, It seems very good, though. It seems like a cool ability. But it also sometimes kind of just, like, feels like... I don't know. I'm curious to see how it plays, though. But it doesn't in, in, in excite me. But then it might just be because it's uh, a mystic. <laughs> All right. Deck building uh, 30. Mystic 05. Fortune... What? Oh, that's just probably in the wrong spot. The deck building. Oh, no, it's the deck building require. No, that's the deck building. I think it's just not, it's just wrong on the back here. Anyway, um, Mystic card 0 to 5, Fortune um, 0 to 3. Yeah, so just the, that should have been deck building options, and then the other one should have been deck building requirements. Okay. Sorted. All right, Mystic 0 to 5, Fortune 0 to 3, Seeker 0 to 5, and the 5 other level 0 Seeker and or Rogue cards. Interesting. The Fortune card is kind of sick. Really interesting. Okay. Uh, one copy of each of the signatures? Yeah, Hand of Mysteries and the Lovers. Okay. Hand of Mysteries. Antoine Moncrief deck only fast. Three cost takes up the... Uh, arcane slot. When enters play, choose and seal one non-autofill token from the chaos bag on it. When you draw a chaos token with the same numerical modifier as the token sealed in hand of the mysteries, look at the top card of your deck or the encounter deck. You may choose to draw that card or place it on the bottom of the deck. If you draw the autofill, return the token seal in hand of mysteries to the chaos bag and shuffle hand of mysteries back into your deck. Hmm. It's interesting. I have no idea who this is supposed to be. To be completely honest. For like which guild. It's an interesting card though. The Lovers. Three cost tarot slot. Uh, if the Lovers in your hand and you draw a symbol token during a skill test, that test, that skill test fails. Oh! Wow. It's drawing your opening hand during setup. You cannot replace it. It must stay in your opening hand. Yeah. Uh, honestly, not too bad. Uh, I like the idea of um, being like, how long can I just push off the lovers? Like, can I live with like five more auto fails in the bag? And it's also a symbol token. So even if you draw a bless token, you fail. Uh, I think it's it's pretty fair, pretty easy to get rid of. And then you never, you never see it again. I like it. It's neat. <sighs> it's a little bit like gambling. It's a little bit random. So like, who's like... I don't know, it doesn't feel very Azorius, but like, I mean, like, it could be forecast. I actually don't know. This one I do not know. All right. 
Rohan Javari. Javari. Rohan Javari. The strong man. Oh, he has five fists. He's definitely strong. Not as strong as Hank Sampson when he turns into his ultimate form, but still pretty strong. 3153. Performer. This looks for nine and five. It's a reaction. When you defeat a non elite enemy, put that card beneath your investigator face down. Limit one card beneath him. Discard a card from beneath Rohan Javari. Deal one damage to an enemy or location that shares a trait with that card. Elder Sign effect is zero. If you succeed, you may deal one damage to an engaged enemy with you. Who the frick are you? Are you Boros? You're very aggressive, so you kind of feel very Boros to me. I don't know. It seems like a cool card, though. I like it. I think this... I like the idea that you hold. You, like, you defeat an enemy, you pick up the body, and then you just, like, throw it at another one of his friends. I love it with occultists, right? Like, with, like, uh, humanoids. Like, I think this is a cool... I, it's a very intriguing investigator. I mean, it also could be, like, Simic, because he's, like, dealing damage. Like, just, like, small bursts of damage. Like, it's like he's... Ca I don't know. It's, I'm, it, this is tougher than I thought. The only one, like... These are, like, the only two that I feel like I'm, like, I get it. Selesnia and Golgari. We're gonna see, though. Does this say somewhere, maybe? No. <laughs> Guardian 05, Neutral 05, Trick 04. Sweeping kick? Sweeping kick? I think right now, my front runners who I'm gonna try are Madeline and Rohan. Those guys, they seem very fun. That's a cool card pool. Guardian 05, Trick 04. I really like that. Uh, one copy of both signatures and then no ranged or firearm cards. Makes sense. Because strong men don't shoot guns. Alright, Showman's Bullwhip. Are you not entertained? Two cost, takes up a hand slot. It's an item weapon melee. It's a Rohan deck only, fast, uses zero tricks. As a reaction, when you discard a card from beneath Rohan, add one resource token to Showman's Bullwhip as a trick. Limit once per round. Action, fight. You get plus one fist for this attack. If an enemy you're fighting is exhausted, you deal plus one damage. Interesting. Get those handcuffs, brother. The real guns shoot strong men. Yeah, that is true. It's sad, isn't it? That is very sad. <laughs> As a lightning bolt, if you're engaged with an enemy that shares a trait with a card underneath Rohan, spend one trick and exhaust showman's bullet. Fight. Uh, this attack gets plus three fists and deals plus one. And you get plus one damage. Seems good. I don't know how likely it is for you to be able to evade an enemy. Um... With it, but I think it's neat. I mean, like, maybe some trick cards can help. Like, great for bosses. Um, if you, like, sweep and kick them and then do that. Or, like, other tricks to evade. I dig it, though. I think it's neat. Alright. Performance anxiety. I don't want to perform. I'm just going to smash up my office instead. It's a terror. Revelation. If there's not an enemy underneath Rohan, take one direct horror and shuffle performance anxiety back into your deck. That's terrifying. Otherwise, spawn the enemy or threat area and makes an immediate attack against you. That's also fucking terrifying wow that is a tough weakness he's a tough character um but that is a scary scary weakness i think it's good i think it's a good weakness this is a very strong ability um but you just need to always be aware of this card because it's shuffling back into your deck is a nightmare all right i have no idea what guild you're from and this is much harder than i thought it was Okay. Uh, Maria Marcos, the Dowager. 5 4 1 2. Interesting stat line for a rogue. I'm excited to see where this goes. Socialite and Soaks for 5 and 9. After you play an event from your hand, you may choose to attach it to your location. Now, this is forecast. So, this one's Azorius. This one's Azorius. Okay. As a reaction, after you discover a clue, play an event attached to your location. So after you play an event from your hand, you may choose to attach to your location. And as a reaction, after you discover a clue, play an event attached to your location as if it was in your hand. This event costs two less resources and gains fast. Discard that event. Yeah, this has got to be forecast, right? Is that the one where like, it reduces the cost? I don't even know. It feels very forecasty to me, though. Let's look at what... I actually don't know how to even... You go advanced search forecast. There we go. No, that is not forecast. 
I mean, maybe it is. No, because it's you reveal a card. What is this one? I think the ability is really cool. Maybe you may, I think I'm wrong. I don't. I know this is tough. This is much tougher than I thought. Elder Sign Zero. You may return an event card you have attached to any location to your hand. Don't be discouraged, my dear. It makes you seem very little a uh, middle class. That's funny. All right, Rogue Zero Five, Neutral Zero Five, Insight Zero Three, Deck Building Size is Thirty, and one copy of your signatures. That's a good ability. That's a very powerful ability. Good stat line, too. All right, Vern Blanchard Sr., Officers of Blanchard and Marcos. That's fun. Three cost asset, takes the uh, ally slot, hooks to three and one. Exhaust him, swap an event that you've attached to location with one in your hand. Also, really good. And he commits for two wild, no matter what. Melancholy. Yeah, you know, sometimes we all get a little bit sad, but I wouldn't say it's a weakness. I'd say that's what makes us human. It's kind of beautiful, isn't it? Revelation, take one horror for each event you own that is attached to a location. <laughs> like a rumba. If you don't have any events attached to locations, take one damage and shuffle Melancholy back into your deck. Well, that's, uh, that's scary. It's certainly spooky. I love the idea of trying to get killed by this, though. I think that's really fun. <laughs> Just put down a bunch. Uh, is, uh, shortcuts and inside, right? Yeah. Well, don't play shortcut two in her. <laughs> I mean, you could play shortcut two in her to basically always take one horror from this. It's not terrible. Uh, cause she can play inside zero to three. I like it. I think it's a cool character. No idea what guild it's from. I thought I would, I thought I would hit like all of these, but I'm hitting very few. All right. Oscar DeWitt. The philosopher, the philosopher, the philosopher, five, four, two, one. Scholars, a lightning bolt is going to asset in your control with zero remaining secrets or charges. You gain X resources. X is the maximum num printed number of secrets or charges on that asset. You may not use this ability on an asset without uses, secrets, or charges. Don't know. No idea. Elder sign effect plus two. You may, you may remove a secret or charge from an asset under your control. What an interesting character huh what an interesting idea we got here all right so deck building 30 seeker 05 neutral 05 cards to take up arcane slots 02 occult cards level zero that is also a very crazy deck building all right, one copy of Lapis Philosophorum, one copy of Mind Parasites. Mind Parasites sounds, oh, terrifying, doesn't it? All right, anyways. Lapis Philosophorum. Uh, item of call relic takes up the hand slot. Oscar DeWitt deck only fast. Spend two resources as a lightning bolt. Reveal a card from your hand and search your deck for a card with an equal cost and draw. Oh, okay. Uh, this is Transmute. Search your deck for a card with an equal cost and draw, then shuffle the reveal cards back into your deck. This is Transmute, right? Is that... I thought that was just a... Linked to... That's Demir, then, isn't it? That's Demir. Okay. So Transmute is, you pay a, a mana cost and discard this card, search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So then this one is reveal a card from your hand, search your deck with an equal cost and draw, then shuffle the real card back into your deck. That's what it feels like to me. So then this guy is Demir? Interesting. I actually did not know that was only linked to Demir. Neat. Okay. I mean, that's kind of like what I'm feeling. All right, let's look at Mind Parasites. Oscar DeWitt deck only plays Mind Parasites in your threat area. Each time you take a brain or a book test, take one damage. Discard two assets with a minimum of one charge or secret on them. Discard minus discard Mind Parasites. Okay. That's pretty spooky.
Uh, can you imagine getting this on your draw on your first upkeep phase? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty spooky. You have to get rid of two cards. I could see it maybe... It seems very oppressive, doesn't it? Like, maybe if it was discard assets from your play area with a minimum of... With at least two charges on them, right? So, like, it still gets rid of something, but it's just, like, it's only, like, one card instead of two. I mean, like, I suppose this guy's whole thing is to get charges with, like, cards with charges on them. But... It seems tough. It seems very tough. Like, if you get this during your first upkeep phase... I don't know. I dig the idea. I'd have to see how it is in practice, though, um, before it goes. Love the flavor text. Oh, my God. It feels awful. But it proves that I'm chosen, don't you see? Hell yeah, brother. I like that you have a mouth in your eye. Very interesting card. Kind of looks like Jared Leto, which is kind of, like, making me a little bit scared. But I like the idea of this a lot. It's very interesting. The secrets or charges is kind of cool. Okay. All right, Dean Campbell, the hooligan. Oh, this is Rakdos. Okay, so then that must mean the first one's cruel. All right, this one's easy. This one's easy. That's Rakdos. Rakdos cares about being hellbent by not having cards in hand. Three, three, three. For every three cards in your hand, you get minus one to each of your stats. While you have no cards in your hand, you get plus one to each of your stats. You draw three cards during the upkeep phase. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Very interesting, huh? Drifter Paradox 7-7. Seven, seven. Paradox makes sense. Like, it's like he's, like, actively trying to work against himself. Okay. Um... When you, as a reaction, when you commit, discard or play the last card in your hand, you may take an additional action during your turn this round. Weird. Feels very kind of like Stella-y, doesn't it? I dig it. Elder Sun Effect is plus two. You may either discard a card from your hand or shuffle a card in your discard pile back into your deck. They say you can have it all, but they don't mean it for you to have it all at once. 7-7 seven, seven for Soak. Deck size 42. Hey, Patrice, how's it going? At deck creation, choose Guardian, Rogue, or Mystic. Survivor card 0 5, neutral 0 to 5, up to 10 level 0 to 1 events, and or skills of your chosen secondary class. Notably, no seeker, but that's okay. Your survivor. Two copies of Temporal Singularity, one insects from Shigai. Really neat. I like this. This guy's very intriguing. Alright, so he has two copies of this. And one of this. Okay. Temporal Singularity. Dean Campbell deck only. It's a skill that commits for a while. It's an innate and desperate. As a reaction, if this card is in your discard pile and you do not have any cards in your hand, you may shuffle it into your deck. And then one copy per sh uh, shovel back per round. Okay. So if this card is in your discard pile and you don't have any cards in your hand, you may shuffle it into your deck. That's cool. Max one committed for skill test. While it's committed to a skill test, that test gets minus two difficulty. Okay. So it's like a gumption that you can just recur. That seems very powerful. All right. Then we got Insects from Shagai. It's a tough day to be covered in bugs, brother. Dean Campbell deck only. Revelation. Draw cards to the top of your deck until you have reached your maximum hand size. <laughs> oh, wild. Oh, no. Uh, I'm putting your thread here. At the beginning of your upkeep phase, if you have three or more cards in hand, take a horror. If you have no cards in your hand, discard insects from Shigai. What an interesting character, huh? A weakness that makes you draw eight cards. No, well, up to eight cards. What the hell? This is a, a very intriguing investigator. Wild. I think this guy could potentially be very fun to play. 
I don't know. This guy seems very, very neat. I'm into this. What the hell? Okay, this guy's very intriguing. I think that guy's very neat. So right now, like, my front runners, Madeline, Rohan, I like Lotta, and Dean. Very intriguing characters. All right, Nina Popova, the dancer. One, two, three, four. Da, da, let's do it. That's a great stat line. It's very fun to say. Performer curse seven seven. You begin the game with Totentons in play. Death dance. Okay, you have one additional arcane slot. Let's look at Totentons. Three cost. Uh, the dance of death. Dance ritual. Nina Popova deck only. You may use your foot in place of your brain. Okay. You get plus one brain for each of your arcane slots that is filled. Lightning Bolt, one at a time, resolve an action bill on each, ask in your cane slots, ignoring their action cost, and discard Totentons. Well, okay, so it's a little bit like Daisy. Alright, so you have one additional arcane slot. As a reaction, when you would play an asset that takes up an arcane slot, reduces cost by X for X the amount of empty arcane slots you have. Whoa! That's cool! So your first, like, three cost spell is free. So you may use your foot in place of your brain. So does that mean then, like, the cards that then say you get plus one brain, does it give you plus, like, plus one foot? Like, for example, let's say just just asking for a friend six cents four. Would that give you plus two foot? Or would it still give you plus two brain, but you just use your foot? No idea who this is. I, I've, I've given up hope on me knowing who the investigator, like, what guilds they are, unless it, like, it specifically says, Hello, I'm from the Orzov guild. <laughs> this is flavorfully such a damn cool uh, custom investigator. I love the idea, the ballerina, like, the dancer works really well because she has high foot, and then as it goes and she, like, she's, like, focusing more, she's dancing and she's getting more involved... Like, her will gets stronger. I think it's really cool. I think it's really neat. Um, so, Mystic, 0, 5. Neutral, 0, 5. Cursed, 0, 3. That's a strong card pool. That's a very strong card pool. Signature weakness is the Pallid Dancer. X3, 5? Excuse me. Uh, Hunter Alert. X is the number of Nina Popova's filled arcane slots. Huh. Spicy. Arcane slotless Nina Popova? I love the art on that card. Yeah, it, it was a it was a close call. Um but the the guard the it's it's nice to have a win in that one after so very long so very long but we we did it we did it and it was spooky it was it was tough i love the scenarios though they're very fun i mean like as a mystic you can kill this thing like let's just if you just fill two of your slots like it's super easy interesting i like i really like Nina Popova. I love her stat line. One, two, three, four. Like, now we're having fun. Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> really interesting. I'm excited to see how this one plays. Because I think it could be really cool. I think the Totem Tons is really good. I do wish that we had, like, from the... Um, I think you cheated one charge in the axe at some point, though. Alright, ban Holy Helicopter. <laughs> um... What was I saying? Oh, I wish that, like, the stuff, like, you begin the game with Totentons in play was just part of, like, set up on the back. Like, like how, like, Lola's stuff was moved to the back. Um, I think that it could be, like, uh, I think it would just be cleaner for the game. And I wish that was, like, there from the beginning. You just, like, then initial setup instructions, right? You begin the game with Totentons in play. I think that would be really good. I'd even, honestly, if I was making a custom investigator, I would just put it on the back. 
additional setup. And if someone doesn't read, you're like, hey, go read the back of the card. Or I put it on the front, hey, go remember to resolve the initial setup. <laughs> No idea what guild you're from, though. You've absolutely eluded me. All right, Sophia Shapiro, the hired gun, 4242. Hey, 4242. Fun stat line. Criminal Syndicate. After you seated a fight action on a firearm asset, spend two resources. Take an immediate fight action with the same firearm asset. If you succeed, this attack deals its damage to all enemies at your location. Limit once per round. Is this overload? Is this, is it overload? It seems like it. Uh, that's a cool card. I'm just like, I wonder if this fall, falls into the Skidzo tool world, though. Where it's just like slightly too expensive. But I don't know, I'd have to see it in action. We'll see what the, what the card pool is, too. Because there's got to be like Rogue in here to make money, right? Elvis on X plus X. Rex is the highest rating ammo on a fire mass under your control. <coughs> Excuse me. Deck size 30, illicit card 0, 05, guardian 0, 03, neutral 0, 05, and a five other rogue survivor cards. Illicit card 0, 05, okay. So just all the guns? <coughs> all the big rogue guns? Guardian 0, 03. I guess I'm just dying. Interesting card. Interesting deck building for this. So one copy of uh, signatures, deck 30. No police or agency cards. Sorry, um, agency backup, but get get fricked that does read very is it to me that's overload okay sophia's infallible 32 four cost asset takes in the hand slot uses five ammo as an action spend an ammo fight you get plus one for this attack this attack deals plus one damage as a reaction during upkeep you may choose to put one ammo on her gun instead of gaining a resource if you do draw a card that's really good that is very powerful <clears throat> that's a cool card it's cool. And the weakness is Roger Bishop PI. Uh, 224 alert. While he's engaged with Sophia, she cannot take fight actions. Pardon? So you need someone else to take her. Take him from you if you wanted to just fight him. Because she only has two foot. That seems really tough. Like, it seems really easy in two-player, right? Because someone just grabs it, eats up some of their turn. But, like, imagine this in solo. <laughs> imagine this in true solo. Not that I think, in all fairness, not that I think you should design for true solo. But imagine this in the opening of Circle Undone. And you get this on turn one. <laughs> She's fucked. She's dead. <laughs> She's actually dead. Handcuff him? Yeah, you could... You could run handcuff for your one weakness. You could do that. I don't think that's the answer to card design, though. In all fairness. I don't think that's the answer to card design. I don't know, it just feels like, because I like to think of it like, what if you're alone and you cannot, like, if you cannot solve your own weakness without, like, putting a lot into it, it's probably not great. It could be one of those things when Roger Bishop is engaged with Sophia uh, Shapiro, uh, each fight action takes two additional actions, right? Because then it gets, like, the exact same flavor of it, but it doesn't just kill her if she draws it in Circle Undone. Sorry, the uh, in Witching Hour, right? In the opening scenario. So, I think this one... I feel like this one has, like, an issue with that, looking at it. I think, like, the flavor behind it is cool, but I definitely think it needs the whole Witching Hour... Um, you need the nozzle on it. Because Sophia Shapiro, she's like, all right, I'm going to play my Sophia... So my, my Sophia's uh, Infallible 32. She gets it out. She's like, all right, I'm ready for anything. I'm all alone in the witching hour. Give me a witch. I'm ready to kill it. Oh, shit, it's Roger Bishop P.I. I guess I'm going to just be passing on my three actions this next turn, right? Like, that. that's a pretty bad gameplay loop that she can't solve her own weakness without, like, playing handcuffs, which I do not think 
is the solution to this, right? Like the car, it should be, it should be super inefficient. Like a triple, like, yeah, like, yeah. Because that's just like, feel bad. And I don't think game design should feel bad. I think game design should be tough, but there should always be a solution. Even if that solution is hyper inefficient. Like just on the card itself, I think. I think every card should be managed on the card. Other things should make it either. Um, other things should make it easier, right? Like I think handcuffs is a good solution for this guy in the long term, but I don't think it should be like the only solution for it. Like give her a Silas deck building and I can get behind it, right? Like sorry, a Silas stat line two two four four. I can get behind that too. But right now I just see this card and I'm like, oh, this is gonna make some. This is gonna make a, a someone's day bad. They're gonna be like, why am I playing this character now that I'm? I mean, I know that the the, the the situation I'm describing is super niche, right? Like the whole witching hour draw it on the second turn. Uh, what if he was two 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 two? I can see that too. I think two 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 could also solve that because then like. Uh, Sophia actually has like a case to actually evade it as well. I think that that also could be a pretty manageable solution. But this is also like just on reading the cards. I don't know how it actually goes. But like the whole cannot take fight actions. Like, can you imagine she also draws <laughs> an enemy during the mythos phase? She got that witch she was waiting for in witching hour. Yeah, I think it's just it's just a bit too tuned. It's kind of like with this one. It just feels like it's a bit. Um, bit much but cool card i think the idea behind the card is really neat i actually i actually like all of them i think all the investigators bring something like fun and special and cool um which is awesome i think the designs are really nice all right let's see if we can get this so i think you're gruel i think you were selesnia you were golgari you were easy you were a gimme you're no longer is it your is it because you're overload your rakdos all right let's cross them out so we got gruel rakdos selesnia gogari you were demir because you have transmute and i'm pretty sure your is it i think you're probably forecast you also could be um haunt you also could be Haunt from Orzov. You could be that. Because you kind of like the lingering thing. Like a lingering ghost. No idea who you are. You reduce the cost. I'm also actually, like, super, uh, I don't know much about, like, the, the original Ravnica, I don't know too much about. So maybe these are all based on, like, no, but overload. I feel like that's overload. But, like, maybe they're not, like, and this is, this has got to be Convoke. You might be Forecast. You actually might be the Forecast, and then you might be Haunt. And then you're Simic, and I don't know why, and then you are Boros, and I don't know why. <laughs> but I'm just guessing. I think these are really cool, and I'm excited to play with them. I'm excited to build a deck. I think right now my front runners are these four. So we're definitely going to play with at least two of them next week on the channel, but if you're watching live on Twitch right away. Uh, Alex, these are cool. These are really awesome custom investigators, and I'm excited to play with them. I wish that it was easier to print these cards, because I would love to just like play with these guys just through an actual like full paper campaign. I think that could be really fun. But alas... Alas, not so lucky with that. But one day I'm hoping I can print a bunch of custom player cards because they are really cool. Uh, again, the link to this uh, workshop file is down in the description. I highly suggest you check it out if you like these investigators. But thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, the GG's.